Hello and welcome to the course of manufacturing method. Now this is our 15th lecture and in this lecture we will be talking about tool wear, tool life and machinability. So these things we will be see, uh, seeing in this lecture. So let's start our lecture with lecture objective. So our lecture objective here is to understand about what is tool life. We will understand about what is tool life then we, uh, we will get an insight about tool life what is uh, tool life how it is uh, how it is calculated and uh, what is the meaning of tool wear then we will know about what is tool life equation and we will know about machinability and factors that affecting the machinability so let's start so first is what is tool life tool life is nothing it is the useful cutting life of tool expressed in time it is the useful cutting life that means what will be the useful cutting life that for a cutting tool the sharp edge is uh, important so when the uh, this edge is blunt when this edge is blunt then at that time we will say that the tool life is ended so that means so useful cutting life means after the regrinding or after grinding till the, the requirement time required till the next regrinding is known as tool life so uh, here it is time period measured from start to cut to the failure of the tool is known as tool life in another word it can be said that the time period between to consecutive resharpening or regrinding resharpening or regrinding or replacement resharpening means regrinding so time period between two consecutive resharpening or regrinding is known as uh, tool life so this is our definition of the tool life now how can we measure the tool life tool life can be measured in several ways the some of the ways are first number of the workpiece that is machined after uh, between two consecutive regrinding this uh, we can calculate by this uh, so this is one method number of pieces of work that can be machined first next total volume of the material removed so volume of the material removed is given by MRR okay volume of the material removed is given by MRR and MRR value is nothing but it is a multiply multiple of uh, it's a product of our cutting velocity feed and depth of cut into into thousand why into thousand because this our uh, this cutting velocity is given in millimeter per minute so for uh, 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 if we convert it in meter per minute then BST by uh, this cutting velocity is milli uh, meter per minute so uh, if we want to convert it into millimeter per minute then thousand VST this is with this will be the equation of the MRR now total volume of material removed this can be a index of the total volume of material removed means total volume of material material removed between to successive regrinding that is our measure of tool life next total length of cut what will be the total length of cut between two successive regrinding this can be a index of measuring tool life fourth the limiting value of the surface finish fifth increase in cutting force so when we can say that there is a we can see that there is a increase in the cutting force at that time we can see say that uh, the tool is blunt and if the tool is blunt that means the tool life is exhausted and dimensional accuracy if we are not getting desired dimensional accuracy that means what happened there is some problem with the tool next overheating and fuming and fourthly presence of chatter by these things we can know that uh, by these things we can know that the in the machine or in the machine tool 
what happened the tool life is exhausted so for exhaustion tool life exhaustion is understood by these things the uh, increase in to uh, increase in cutting force B bad surface finish or uh, this limiting uh, that surface finish is increased from the this limiting value dimensional accuracy is not achieved overheating and fuming may present and presence of chatter is uh, there so these are the things so these are the things uh, by which these are the parameter by which we can measure the uh, tool life now in case of this uh, in case of uh, this tool life this tool life is exhausted means there is some failure so now for the tool there is some uh, modes of failure the modes of failures are first temperature failure so for temperature failure temperature failure can be seen in the plastic deformation of the uh, of the chip tool interface or ce uh, of ce due to high temperature and cracking at the uh, uh, plastic deformation of the cutting edge due to high temperature and cracking at the cutting edge due to then cracking at the cutting edge due to high temperature thermal stresses these are the modes of temperature failure now rupture in the tool point this is another modes of temperature failure uh, another modes of tool failure and this rupture uh, is chipping uh, of the tool edge due to mechanical impact impact then crumbling of of uh, your cutting edge due to build up edge formation and there are third type of failure those are gradual failure at the tool point these are flank wear and cutter wear so now where this term is new where is nothing but decay is uh, where is uh, wear is synonymous to decay so tool wear means tool decay it is caused by the uh, it causes this tool wear causes the tool to lose its original shape and uh, thus it can uh, result in ineffective cutting so when there is tool wear present at that time the resharpening or regrinding is required so what are the reasons of tool wear now reasons of tool wears are attrition wear diffusion wear abrasion wear or abrasive wear electrochemical wear chemical wear plastic deformation and thermal cracking these are the reasons these are the reasons of the tool wear now we will see about attrition wear attrition wear when when we can see we can see it at low cutting speed the flow of the material which passes the cutting edge is irregular and less streamlined and built up edge and discontinuous uh, chip is formed in case of uh, in case of low cutting speed so fragment of the tool is drawn from the tool surface immediately so this is a uh, this is attrition well similarly at high cutting speed at high cutting speed slow and interrupted cutting at uh, high uh, cutting speed slow and interrupted cutting and presence of vibration uh, uh, that can found uh, uh, this attrition well can found in carbide tools at low cutting speed so these are the attrition to uh, wear now diffusion wear diffusion wear is in diffusion wear diffusion of the metal and carbon atom into the tool surface and into the workpiece and chip due to this deformation this deformation occurs due to mainly high temperature high pressure and rapid flow of the chip and the workpiece that pass the tool so diffusion rate depends on the metallurgical relationship and it is also diffusion wear is also significant in your carbide tools now abrasive wear abrasive wear is mainly due to presence of hard material in the in the workpiece 
when there is hard material present in the workpiece that hard material what it does that hard material keeps up or indent by abrasive action indent the tool material from the cutting edge and uh, uh, and uh, so due to that the, 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 the and abrasive wear takes place and due to strain hardening that is induced in the chip and the workpiece due to plastic deformation this is the second reason so this due to these two reason these two reason in uh, contributes in the flank wear and this abrasive wear contributes in the flank wear and effect can be reduced by fine grain size of the tool and lower percentage of the uh, and lower percentage of cobalt if there is fine grain structure in the tool that means the tool will be very hard if the tool is hard the present uh, the hard material that is present in the workpiece material cannot easily indent the tool so this this abrasive wear can be controlled by using fine grain uh, fine grain tool material so that is abrasive wear and abrasive wear contributes in flank wear now electrochemical wear there is an electrochemical wear when when the iron pass between tool and workpiece so when the iron is formed if the temperature is very high and due to oxidation of the tool surface the, the iron formation may occur and due to this iron formation uh, what happen this iron pass through the tool and workpiece and due to this the tool material break down the tool material break down that means the component of the tool material break down at the chip tool interface so this is known as electrochemical wear now similarly there is chemical wear chemical wear is nothing but when in intra interaction between tool and workpiece material so due to that interaction between tool and workpiece material if they reacted chemically at elevated temperature such as plastics when we use carbide tool in the plastic plastic may melt down by by the heat that is produced in the carbide tool and the, by that by uh, while melting down plastic that plastic can react with the carbide uh, carbides and make another component and decay the carbide tool so that is a way of chemical wear and chemical wear can uh, can occur due to improper cutting fluid fuel, uh, fluid use so if we use improper cutting fluid fuel that can induced or that can catalyze catalyze the equal the chemical reaction so chemical reaction or chemical affinity may be increased in case of using uh, by using bad cutting fluid so this is known as chemical wear now another reasons are another reasons of the tool wears are plastic deformation so when the compressive stress those compressive stress those, that is important for the cutting of the material so those compressive stress when the compressive stress acts on the tool rack face so, and tool can so when they act on the tool rack face at that time what happened the tool may deform in downwards and so it may reduce the our uh, relief angle so while reducing the relief angle uh, by reducing relief angle what is increased if the relief angle is increased the uh, ch uh, the chance of increasing the rubbing with the machine surface may occur and uh, and due to that due to that the tool geometry may be modified and uh, it can accelerate the po wear progress so plastic deformation is a another mode of uh, uh, tool wear another is thermal cutting uh, cracking due to circu uh, cyclic thermal stress due to cyclic thermal stress that is present in the edge the cracking may occurs so by that uh, the cracking can be comb crack the cracking can be uh, transverse crack 
and the result of the thermal cracking is complete chipping of the tool. So, that is your uh, uh, tool wear and how causes of the tool wear. Now, we will see about uh, uh, flank wear and crater wear. So, here in this figure we can see a tool geometry and in this, in this, what we can see? We can see the wear that may present in the flank face that is known as flank wear or edge wear and the wear that or decay or failure or decay or uh, disruption that may present in the uh, in the your uh, rake face that is known as crater wear. So, flank wear always present in the edge of or flank edge that is why it is called edge wear and crater wear is always present in the rake face and that is why it is called uh, face wear. So, flank wear, what about flank wear? Flank wear, tool slide, when tool slides over the surface of the workpiece, the friction may develop and due to this friction and abrasion, adhesion between, adhesion means attraction between two different matter, uh, two different matter that is adhesion. So, adhesion between workpiece and the tool results in BOE and due to this BOE, cutting edge starts welding, wending along the clearance space and, uh, and uh, so that means the cutting edge starts bending and independent of the cutting condition of the tool uh, piece or material. So, and brittle and discontinuous chip may increases as the speed increase. So, that is, this is flank wear. So, primary stage of uh, at the primary stage, so these are the uh, 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 wear propagation as the cutting time increases. Uh, so, flank wear also increases. So, at the primary stage, the rapid wear may be occurred, rapid wear may be occurred due to what? Due to very high stress at the tool point and wear rate is more less or linear in the secondary state. This is our secondary stage and after the secondary stage, after the secondary stage is over, there is tertiary stage of flank wear and in that in that tertiary stage, the uh, wear rate increases very rapidly, uh, which results in catastrophic failure. That means, which results in uh, uh, unnatural uh, or unexpected failure. So, this is tertiary uh, in the tertiary before the tertiary stage, regrinding should be uh, done. So, that is. Our uh, that is our uh, flank wear. Now, in case of crater wear, crater wear may be occurred due to direct contact with the uh, tool and workpiece, and due to that direct contact, a cavity may form in the uh, rake face, and uh, it can be seen in case of ductile material with continuous chip, which uh, initiate rapid fracture near the nose of the tool. And this rapid fracture leads to weakening of the tool, increases increase in cutting temperature and cutting force and friction. So, that due to this crater wear may increase. Now, for tool life, measurement of tool life, the measurement of tool life is done by Taylor's tool life equation that is V to the power B is equal to constant. So, B is machining index to the power B or to the, B, T to the power N. Maybe you can see in some book that is B, V T to the power N and this N is machining index and V is the cutting speed in meter per minute. So, here it is somewhat wrong. It is in meter per minute and tool life is in minute. B is constant and C is also constant. So, now, in this figure, in this figure, we can, uh, we have to draw the, uh, the uh, cutting speed versus cutting tool, cutting speed versus tool life 
at a uh, log paper and we can see for different cutting tool material such as HSS, cemented uh, car uh, carbide uh, and uh, ceramics uh, for that cutting tool, uh, tool life expression uh, cutting tool varies or tool life varies at the cutting speed increases and uh, as the, uh, the, the tool life is also increases by uh, with increase of cutting speed so tool life expressed in the volume of the material removed can be given by L is equal to T V F D so that is your tool life that is expressed in the this is your tool life that is expressed in the uh, time of material removed so tool life this tool life tool life measurement can be done by using diamond indenter technique radioactive technique test at elevated cutting speed facing test test with lower critical uh, uh, with low wear criterion or criteri so what are the factors those affecting the tool life the factors those are affecting the tool life are cutting speed physical properties of the workpiece area of cut ratio of the feed uh, to depth of cut speed and angles of the shape and angles of the tool tool material and heat treatment that is present in the tool material nature and quality of the coolant rigidity of the workpiece and the machine tool uh, and the machine tool so that is uh, the factors w w in which the tool life depends now we will see about machinability so machinability can be defined in terms of the machinability is nothing but ease of machining is defined by machinability so it can be defined in terms of surface finish and surface integrity it can be defined in terms of tool life it can be defined in terms of force and po power required and also it can be defined the level of difficulty in the chip control so a good machinability may uh, may indicate that good surface finish and surface integrity and a very long life with a very low power and force requirement may occur and machinability index are available for each type of material and at uh, uh, and the condition to achieve that rated uh, index so that are given so what are the factors those affecting the tool life the factors those are affecting the tool life are material of the workpiece that is hardness tensile property and strain hardenability of the workpiece tool material what is the tool material size and shape of the tool next uh, velocity of the cut type of the machining operation what are the type of the machine used or machine tool used quality of the lubricant used in machining friction between chip tool interface and shear strength between the, of the workpiece material these things should be known now uh, the machinability for uh, can be evaluated in the terms of or by uh, checking some of the factors such as tool life form and size of the chip shear plane angle cutting force and power consumption surface finish cutting temperature mrr of the tool grind uh, MRR per tool grind or material removing load per uh, regrinding, rate of cutting under standard forces and dimensional accuracy. By checking all these terms, uh, we can uh, evaluate the machinability factors. So, machinability decreases with increase of hardness and tensile strength. Machinability also uh, machinability of the material can be accessed, assessed by any of the following such as tool life, limiting MRR, cutting force, surface finish and chip shape. So this is the index of the relative machinability for different material. So for example, MG alloy, magnesium and its alloy has uh,
lower higher machinability in the case of sintered carbide uh, stellite white cast iron hss these are the uh, uh, white cast iron these three material will have least machinability so relative machinability increases uh, as we move up in this list so that is it that is your uh, relative machinability so uh, in this lecture we have discussed about tool wear tool life and machinability so thank you hope you enjoy this lecture and if you have any problem then you may ask in the live class i will try to resolve them thank you